right um sorry about that i had to take a break to take a glass of water but we are back and we'll be continuing from where we stopped i was saying that um one entrance of the devil into family is to break the family order so once the family order is broken he has access so even though pockets of individuals are praying so the husband is praying there individually as much as he can um the wife is praying there as much as she can but there is no collective prayer he says one we chase a thousand two we chase ten we put ten thousand to flight so there is a a a geometric progression to, to this thing so once there is no family order we the family is losing out of the benefits of marriage so the devil comes break the family altar and then he can assess the family do you understand so he robs the family of their benefits um of the benefits that they should have gotten so as a single it is good to begin to de develop a disciplined study life disciplined prayer life and you know you will carry that into your marriage and um i will also admire someone that you are spiritually compatible with i don't know if i've made a point earlier but marry someone who you are spiritually compatible with so don't um go into a marriage because of the nice things because of the flashy things what the guy buys for you um the eateries he takes you to the restaurants he takes you to and all the um the flashy flashy things so the question you must ask yourself is am i spiritually compatible with this person is very very important it is very 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 important because if you don't marry someone you are spiritually compatible with you will struggle in that marriage it will be important to you so that's why the, the scripture will say do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers is an on is an unequal yoking. So when you yoke things that are not equal, there will be friction. So don't be carried away with with material things that you forget the main meat, which is the spiritual things. So we move on. Number three, how to maintain to build and maintain a viable spiritual atmosphere in the home. Number three, engage your night seasons as a family occasionally. So what I'm talking about here is um, being able to, as a family, you you pray in the night to so engage night seasons, engage night seasons, engage night seasons. Things, transactions take place in the night. Transactions. So the spiritual realm is busier in the night than in the day. It's reverse for the physical realm. The physical realm is busier in the day than in the night, but the spiritual realm is in is in is the opposite. So you find out that um, spirit beings are more active at night. So they take orders, they execute orders, and then when the day breaks, the result of the transactions at night begin to play out in the day. So Jacob, for example, had this encounter with, with that um, angel he wrestled with at night. Paul and Silas, they were delivered at night. Do you understand? So when you go through scriptures, you begin to note that nights, nights have their place in our spiritual work. So as a family, you begin to to um, engage night seasons. So as singles, what um, what the, how does this down to you right now you should start engaging your night seasons as a single like i said earlier the, the the altar does not change anybody that you went to the altar and said i do it does not translate you to a person that now loves praying in the night no it's a, it's the it is the disciplines that you engage as a single that you will carry into your marriage so begin to force yourself to pray the night 
So I remember that as a single, I usually pray 12 a.m. when I was in the university. So every 12 a.m. I'm out, I'm praying. So it helped me. And one thing it does for you is that when you do those, when you develop those disciplines as a single, now when you get into marriage and it's like your thing begins to pipe down, you are you can easily dictate, oh, I'm falling away. And you can, you know, start praying to God to come back to the things you used to do. But if you don't do those things as a single and you enter marriage, <clears throat> your work with God will dwindle. And you don't even notice because even before you, you got married, there was really nothing to it. Do you understand? So when you do this as a single, it helps you in your married life. So finally, because of our time, number four, create a spiritual atmosphere through playing soft spiritual, spirit-filled songs in your house. <coughs> so what does this mean? It means that you don't just, um, songs as spirits. Songs are spiritual. Music is spiritual. So when you fill your house, with spirit-filled songs, you make it viable for angelic activities. Do you understand? Our plan as a family, um, even before we got married, is to play soft songs throughout in the house. So we plan to have these speakers on the walls, whereby music we play 24 hours softly. So you can do any, anything you are doing, you have your discussion, cook, eat, whatever you are doing, but at the background, there is a soft music playing. So it helps to create an atmosphere. In that kind of atmosphere, you cannot struggle to pray. You cannot, because the atmosphere is already there. Do you understand? So, there are some presents that are still mixing pure and impure. So, what do I mean by that? When you go to their phone, <clears throat> you have like 40% spirit filled songs, 60% worldly songs. And what they do is that in the morning, morning, mornings, you know, where everywhere is calm, they play, you know, songs, gospel songs, spirit filled songs. Then, towards afternoon, <laughs> They now change it to what they jam, so they enter that, that that dimension. What you are doing is that you are not making progress. So in the morning, you are playing your spiritual songs. Angels begin to come dance around. At noon, you change. Angels check out. Demons come and cause havoc. So you are really not making progress. And probably it's because you don't understand that music is spiritual. So, you have King Saul being, you know, oppressed by the demon spirit and he calls for David. He comes, plays music and the demon checks out. <laughs> Do you understand? So, music carries spirits. Music carries spirit. So, the kind of song you engage in your house determines you, the spiritual atmosphere that will be in your home. So, for example, this um, soft instrument that I explained at the background of the video now, it, when you play this song, is the um, instrumental of Lawrence Oyo. When you play it, it creates your atmosphere. So, I want to give you an instruction if you don't mind. Go through your phone. Any song that is not spirit filled, delete. As a single. So, you are building yourself up. To be really a spiritual man. 
So you don't mix pure water and impure water and expect to have something beautiful. Mm -mm. No, you don't. So even though you may be doing it in tears, oh, you love this artist, but you are doing it and you are crying. Those tears will. It says he that bears precious seed crying will, you know, come back with the harvest. So as you are deleting, you are, you are. <laughs> You are crying, but in years to come, you will bring forth your harvest when you have a viable spiritual atmosphere in your home. So, with these four points of mine, I believe I've not confused you, <laughs> but I've convinced you that it's possible to build a spiritual atmosphere in your home, and then that these are the ways to do it, and that God is interested in it. So let's just pray for a moment. Go ahead and begin to pray in the spirit. You are making decisions right now and you are asking God for strength to carry out those decisions. Oh, no, dia shanama tenemanaya kadasya. As the Lord to strengthen you in your inner man. <coughs> that He will strengthen you in your inner man. Yamakala Baba Bako Menenesh. Amana Mana Kini Mana 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 Yana Mana Yikana Mana Niyana Mana Bala Tabaya Kana Mana Ya. I see the angels moving in your direction, ministering unto you. Come and name any other that a baba baba di shakata da. Oh, ayata namasya. I see the angels bringing your husband, pulling him into your space. Yet a little while, he that comes, the he that is to come, will come. He will not tarry. This is a word for someone. <clears throat> the spouse you've been waiting for for so long, yet a little while he will come, he will not tarry. Father, we thank you. I declare over my listeners you will have good homes, you have good marriages, you have good families. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. <coughs> All right, thank you for joining us. Once again, I appreciate it. Our host, Mr. Elijah Chikode, for the privilege. Thank you. God bless you. Do have a lovely day. <laughs>